Getting rid of everything that doesn't matter allows you to remember who you are. Simplicity doesn't change who you are. It brings you back to who you are. Simplifying your life invites you to start peeling back the layers of excess, outside and in. Once you remove all the things that have been covering you up and holding you back, you can step into yourself, back into your heart, and be you again. That's how I feel about my garden. <laughs> Letting go of so much stuff over the last three years has just allowed me to lean in so hard into something that I didn't know a thing about three years ago. And now I grow vegetables and feed my family every single day from all of these plants that I have out here. And I thought I'd sort of just take you through what a few mornings look like for me and uh, what my morning power hour looks like. I talked about that a few videos back of just where I spend an hour in the mornings just doing what needs doing in the kitchen and then I'm done for the day and part of that is taking care of my garden and feeding my family. So I thought I'd just take you through a couple of mornings and what that looks like. Share some recipes that I make and let's go. Oh, welcome to the channel. <laughs> I always forget to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Erica Lucas. I am passionate about making my life simple and sharing ideas and inspiration on this channel and over on my website for you. And maybe you want to simplify your life along with me. Let's walk together. Two things are happening this year that did not happen last year. The tomatoes are getting these splits on them. I don't know what that is. And the second thing is pests. I did not, I was very fortunate last year. I did not deal with pests last year. And this year I've had all kinds of squash bugs and beetles and flies. They really like the eggplant. Yeah, the leaves just kind of snap off. That should give it some airflow. A little bit of airflow. Okay. And these were supposed to be jalapenos, but something got to them. Something ate them up. I don't think that that plant's gonna do anything this year. Some carrots, my first year growing carrots. This is another eggplant. These tomatoes seem fine. Cucumber. Caramel. Strawberry patch. This guy had an army worm on him yesterday. I don't see one now. This guy finally has some new leaves and some new growth. Wonderful. <laughs> Wildflowers my daughter planted. Some of these peppers or tomatoes are breaking. This one's breaking. I can actually just pop this guy off and let it ripen in the window. A couple more that are good for today. That tomato's not splitting, that's okay. I'm thinking it's the heat. The heat is different this year. I think the heat is causing them to crack. Like that. I was trying to plan some blog posts, but <laughs> kids are swimming. They want to go swimming, so we're now we're outside. A couple of tomatoes I'm going to slice up. Some for my eight-year-old, he likes it with salt on top, sliced with salt and just eats them like a snack. And I'm gonna put them on top of pesto and homemade bread. So that means I need to make the bread and make the pesto. <laughs> Some basil. Oh, there's another red tomato. There are mark globes. Good number that are orange. In a day or two, they'll be red, but there's a nice chunk in here. A nice chunk in there of tomatoes. In fact, I need to trim this up a bit. Tomatoes like a lot of airflow, and I, I gotta cut off the, some of these. Some red ones in here, these will be good. Snack tomatoes. 
make some jalapeno salsa. Maybe that's what I'll do with the extra tomatoes today because I have a lot of jalapenos that are, that are ready. What we're looking for is for them to be red and really soft. These are definitely ready. See how I just pulled that off? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. We'll put it in the red. Part. There you go. This is fun. <laughs> you want to grab the blackberries? Oh, blackberries. All right. Okay, there you go. There you go. The red ones are the ones that aren't ready yet. Yeah, they still have to need some time to grow. Okay. Yeah, oh go for it. Oh my gosh. Go ahead. Is it good? <laughs> They're good, baby. <laughs> she did it. Nice. This is huge. We've never picked that one. <laughs> this orange one is soft. Do you want to get it? Yeah. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Again. This is cool. There you go. Whoa, look at that. It's sort of green. Yep. Yeah. And I'll put it in the window and it'll ripen a little bit more. What kind is that? What is that? Oh, these are the Marglobes, Bex. Those are the ones you you planted, babe. This one? Okay. This it's, guy has a lot. It's got a little bit of some juice. Oh, look at that. That's okay. I'm going to count our Let's put this one in the window to ripen a little bit. Okay. Let's count our tomatoes. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six blackberries. Those blackberries are all yours. They still need to grow maybe a half an inch or another inch, and the next stage will be striations, vertical striations. That'll indicate that it's stepped it up a notch in spiciness. And then if I leave them on for like another three more weeks, they'll actually start to turn red and then red striations. When they're red with the striations, that's when they're the spiciest. Um, but when they are green with striations, that's when they are just the most, their flavor is just the most impactful. My husband's the only one that eats jalapeno salsa in the house. So I grow jalapenos for him and really for my dad when he's down. So I, cut up the jalapenos and I use a spoon to take the seeds and the guts out of the jalapenos and Andy asked for just a couple of peppers to still have seeds in them so it still had a bit of a kick. The salsa still had a bit of a kick. So I chopped up eight jalapenos and an equal amount of tomatoes uh, volume wise. So it was 50-50 jalapenos and 50-50 tomatoes. Growing food for my family has become one of the most fulfilling things I have done in my life. I love it so much. I love gardening. I love growing things and then making things fresh for my family. This is an onion I got from the farmer's market. This farmer grows the best onions. They're just so fantastic. So I'm chopping up half an onion to go into the salsa with the tomatoes and the jalapenos. I added a clove of fresh garlic to the salsa and then added uh, dried oregano, ground cumin, and salt. The last ingredient I add is fresh cilantro. I do about a palmful, which is like a quarter cup, based on the, you know, the amount of peppers or tomatoes that I got for the day and mix it all together. This is about half of what I made. Uh, the other half went was supposed to go with Andy's lunch the next day for work, but he ate the whole thing in one day. So he ate two servings like this. So eight jalapenos and all the tomatoes. He must have a steel stomach or something because <laughs> I don't know anybody that can eat eight jalapenos and salsa, but he gobbled it up and it makes him happy. And I grew it myself. And uh, there's something very special about being able to do that and having the freedom and the, and the skill set and the perpetual knowledge. I'm always learning how to garden. So he gobbled it up. Okay, so this is my bread recipe. It's from the Prairie Homestead. I will link her video for this recipe below. It's fantastic. You can use it in so many ways. Um, I make just like snack bread or you can make sandwich bread, pizza roll, dinner. I've made dinner rolls out of it. Um, I've made this a lot. And I'm gonna get some rosemary from my garden to add to the dough today. 
All right, you need one and a third cups warm water, active dry yeast. Once it's opened, I refrigerate it. So this is from the fridge, an egg, salt, and flour. And brown sugar, you need brown sugar. surface. So there's our dough. There you go. Remember to good and now turn it, fold it, and press. Good, hon. Good. Turn it, fold it, press. Good job, Bex. And bake it 350, but or preheat the oven for like three minutes at 350 to make it nice and warm and then you let the bread rise in a bowl in the oven. Just remembered I wanted to add some rosemary to the bread. some rosemary I like lots of rosemary okay that looks great sweetie you did a wonderful job I've turned off the oven and put the bread the dough in the bread bowl that we used just cover it with a clean kitchen towel and then put it in the oven So let it rise for another 30 minutes. And now I bake it for about 25 at 350. Alrighty then, off to make some basil. Basil, off to make some pesto. I am gonna cut this guy up. Nice handful. We'll start with that and I can come out and get more if I need to. You're gonna wash and chop. Wait, what if you're cold? What is your cold? Two, oh, three. Okay, so I've got my little KitchenAid mixer. It's like a mini food processor. I can set it to chop or puree. I've already chopped up some fresh garlic. I did uh, two or three cloves. Then I have this much basil. I'll put in some olive oil to thin it out and salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna eat some today. Rebecca's gonna have some today and the rest I'm gonna freeze individually in these ice cube trays and then pop them in a bag and it stays in the freezer for up to six months. And you can just take a cube out and add it to, you know, pastas or just defrost it with bread or whatever. Speaking of bread. Looking good. I have olive oil, garlic, salt, pepper, and fresh basil. Grab some more from the garden to pop in. It's very garlicky. <laughs> so I'm adding more olive oil and more basil to counteract that garlic a little bit, balance it out. 
It looks great. I made it a little bit creamier this time. It's also why I don't pop the stems in there with them. Becca doesn't like it real chunky with the stems. They don't always chop in this particular one. So I just compost the stems and then do the leaves and I made it a little bit creamier this time. Need some salt, for sure. I put tomatoes on top of my pesto and bread. And she just eats pesto and bread. Okay, honey, thank you. Okay, this is how she eats it. She just scoops the pesto on the fresh baked bread. I like my bread, kind of like an open-faced pesto sandwich. It's my sandwich, my open-faced sandwich from the garden. Becca's snack, and then I had enough to make, uh, what is that, 10 cubes for pesto. Here, baby. Try it out. Three pieces of bread. Tomato. Becca decided to go with butter and bread for her round. Hey, <laughs> this guy's a pesto convert. <laughs> you like it? I made the 